Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Bob Rabaki and I'm a consultant with Pragmatic Works. And we get questions sometimes about, you know, as we're building a data warehouse, why do I need to really build a star schema or do I need to build one? We have all these great analytical tools for querying and, and doing machine learning on top of data stored in files and, and, and this all works. So why do I need to, to build a star schema or, or do I need one? The answer, of course, is you, you don't need one, but there are still uh, a lot of cases where having a star schema is extremely valuable. And quite frankly, I don't see this going away. I do see um, more and more analysis being done on data sets that are not in star schema, which is great. You don't need one. But uh, I want to talk today about a couple reasons why you would still want to build a star schema. And one of them is decidedly purely non-technical. So the premise of star schemas really comes down to two things. And one is query performance. So if you've got your star schema loaded on a database like SQL Server, a well-designed star schema uh, generally will provide very good query performance. But if that's not a concern because of all of the high-powered uh, uh, capabilities we have, um, either on-premises or in the cloud, then if we put performance aside, the other key uh, aspect of star schemas is that they're very easy for report developers and report builders and query writers to consume. It's a very simple, easy to use model, generally very intuitive with few relationships between tables. And so to the extent that we want our data to be more accessible to a wider audience, a star schema still facilitates um, that and and so again, this is a really a non-technical reason for why you'd still want to build star schemas, and that's extremely valuable. Now, another reason that star schemas are are, are helpful, and I, I hear this pretty frequently if I'm working with somebody who's using tools like Power BI, for example. Well, if I can pull all of my data into one big data set, I can do whatever I need to in a tool like Power BI. And in that case, that, that may be true. If I've got one big data set and I have all the information I need, I can do my modeling in Power BI and I don't need a star schema. And okay. But where the star schema is gonna help is when you are, you are integrating data from more than one source or uh, two different fact tables, if you will, that have different granularity. And so if I wanna see information from one very large fact table and either relate it on a report or compare it to information in another fact table, perhaps I've got budget data in one table, but I've got actual transactions in another table. Creating a single combined data set that has both budget data and detailed cost transactions is, uh, I'm gonna say impossible, but it's, it's certainly challenging. And so if I have a star schema model uh, and then using a tool like Power BI, it's really, really quite simple and, and powerful to write reports that pull data from two different fact tables or three or four, um, as many as you really want, without having to relate those two fact tables together. Now they have attributes in common, but um, we don't need to combine them like through a query joiner or anything like that. And so um, that's another benefit of, of using a star schema today. I hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions about data warehousing in Azure, star schemas, ETL, cloud data platform, please reach out and let us know. Thank you.